Jim Williams at VA Prince, friend of mine. So I'm bragging to Jim about my place. He said, Coach, I want to come see it. So Jim came up to see my place. We were riding around out there. I'm showing him all my cash and stuff. And I'm so proud. And toward the end of the day, we stopped. And he said, Coach, we're good friends. We've been friends for a long time. He said, I, I got to tell you this. I don't want to hurt your feelings. They said, these cows are embarrassing to you. <laughs> I said, Jim, what are you talking about? I said, hey, so anybody knows cows, we got a bunch of junk cows. Broke my heart, man. I thought those cows, I went and told my wife, I said, we got a problem. She said, what? I said, we got a bunch of junk cows, according to Jim. He said, coach, you got to get them. You got to get them. If they're all white or all black or all red or something, you got to look out there and look like they're there's something, you know, something you know. Well, here about a month ago, I cut some hay, and it hadn't rained since before then. And right now, I don't have any hay. And i got to get another cut to get my head above water this year. I don't want to bite the bullet on this, on this hay business. So one thing I figured out is ranching is a whole lot like coaching. There's a fine little line there between winning and losing. And the main win is being able to, in ranching, to make a profit enough that you can pay your bills and keep living. And that's a fine little line in that. Coaching's that way too. You know, everybody does all the big things. You know, everybody does the simple, easy, big things. Everybody does that. But there's a fine line between how games are decided. And most of the games, every, the games that you watch, that I watch, the ones I coach, and, and a whole lot of those games, when it's over, you might have won, you say, man, we, we, we force you to get out of win. Or you might have lost and say, you know, we could just as well have won that game as we did. And so I like ranching that way. Right? So to me, uh, the thing that I've really, I've learned uh, a lot of things in this, uh, something my dad said, you know, was, uh, you know, bought learning sometimes the best learning. I bought a bunch of this cattle business thing over the last 10 or 12 years. But the one thing, uh, I think little things over time really make a difference. And whatever you're doing in your life, and your business is saying those little things, pennies make dollars, and little things add up. My high school coach, a guy named Ted Jeffries, is in the Texas High School Coaches Hall of Fame. He used to have a deal here in high school every Thursday. He would make us come in, we had a little machine in the back of the locker room. We'd have to take our shoes off and polish our shoes. Take the shoestrings out and get some fresh shoestrings and we had to put them in a certain way. We had to start to go over the top and then over like this and cross them over the top. And before we could leave the locker room, we had to have them, one of the coaches had to inspect the shoes. And so every year he'd tell us the story. He said, you know, I know you guys are wondering what shoestrings has to do with winning. And really, shoestrings doesn't have a lot to do with it. But learning to do the little things exactly right every time has everything to do with it. And so, I still remember that. That's been a long time ago. But I've seen it so many times in my coaching career and in my life. <laughs> learning to do the little things and do them right every time. And a lot of times you know what those things are. But it's a question of having the discipline to do them right and to do them right every time. Now, one of the things that uh, is one of the things, you don't have to take everything that comes along from a legislative uh, situation. I think one of the problems we've had in this country, we've had too many people just sit around and say, well, you know, another bad deal comes down the pipe. You can, we can do something about that. Maybe you can't do it individually by yourself, but collectively, by being a part of this organization, you get a bigger voice, and you have a voice. You can come here and you can affect. We can make this thing uh, be what we want it to be. And so I, I'm really proud and congratulate you on being a, a, a part of this organization and staying in You know, there's a, there's a quote that... Uh, I'm sure all of you have seen that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. So you can sit around as long as you sit around and do nothing and don't voice your opinion. 
then someone that has an axe to grind, they're going to get their deal done. And so it's vitally important that whatever you feel strongly about, that you get in, in your group here, this organization, come to this meeting, and you say, hey, i got something I think is important. And you, you start working with them, and collectively, you can have a big voice in Austin and in, in Washington. And I think it's high time. I think far too long in this country, this state and country, and we've sat around and let, let things kind of go in direction. And I think it's I think we better stand up and, and be counted. Well, whatever our beliefs are, whatever your beliefs are, I encourage you to do that. Uh, you're in a business uh, where I think uh, you know things are changing. I mean those fuel costs go up you're thinking. And it's really hard to do. I think our mind is like a computer. And Whatever you put in that computer is what you get out. So if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. If you put negative thoughts in, you get negative out. <coughs> put positive, wholesome, good thoughts in, that's what you get out. And it's really hard. Now that you go to the grocery store, you're waiting to check out. They got the racks there. There's nothing but junk, filth on the, on the counter. I mean, you have to not even look at all the, the headlines and the magazines they're trying to sell you. You turn your TV on, got your kids there, most of it's junk. I mean, I'm shocked at some of the stuff I see, and my kids are grown now, i got grandkids. And to turn on the television in my house, or go down the road and turn on the radio and hear, I mean, I'll be spending those times, what? What? I cannot believe I'm hearing that on the radio, me going, coming into my car. So, I mean, I turned that station in a hurry. But I think you have to do that because I don't want my computer filled up with a bunch of junk. I want good stuff in there and positive thoughts every day. And I'll deal with the issues and things I have to deal with. I'll do that. But I'll do it with a positive attitude. So I, I would say to you in closing that uh, I hope you'll do that. But all those problems, everybody's got problems. But if you're really fortunate, we're fortunate to be in what we I don't think anything's any better. One time when I was coaching, I was coming out of, uh, I was headed out recruiting. And my whole life, during that span of my life, was live with every minute's like 